Chapter 10. We the People. A computer? said Ben. He stared at the large desktop machine. Yes, that's right, said Annie. It's useful for learning all about the world. Lots of people even carry small computers in their pockets. On smartphones. Phones? said Ben. What are phones? Hmm, hard to explain. Let's look at this computer now, said Jack. Annie and Jack grabbed chairs and sat next to Ben. Watch, said Jack. He tapped a key and the screen lit up. Ben gasped. Wait, said Jack. He did a search for United States of America. Then he clicked on an entry. A map of the United States and the country's great seal appeared on the screen. Oh, how did that happen? Where did that come from? Ben asked. That's hard to explain, too, said Annie. But read what it says. Ben read aloud softly from the screen. The United States is a country of 50 states stretching from the Atlantic to the Pacific Oceans. It covers a vast part of North America. It has a population of more than 325 million people. Since its founding, immigrants from all over the globe have moved to the United States and became citizens. My goodness, whispered Ben. Jack pointed to the great seal of the United States at the top of the screen. That's a symbol for our country, he said. I know that symbol, said Ben. In 1776, I was on a committee to create it. He read the writing on the seal. E pluribus unum. That's Latin for out of many, one. Right, out of many, one, said Annie. Our teacher told us what that means. The United States is made up of many different states and people from all over the world, but we are all one nation. Yes, yes, said Ben. I wonder if our delegates have forgotten those words. Probably, said Annie. People forget them in our time, too. It's so important to come together as one country, said Ben. But how can we do that? We are very divided. Maybe the different sides have to keep talking to each other and listening to each other and agree to go forward, said Annie. She's right, said Jack. Don't forget. You can add important stuff later. They'll be called amendments, like amendments that gu guarantee freedom of speech and freedom of religion. And give women the vote, said Annie. And end slavery and give everyone equal rights, said Jack. Yes, yes, that makes sense, Ben said. Perhaps creating a constitution is only the first step, not the last. Exactly, said Jack. Ben stood up. I must go now. I must go home. I have to be back for the afternoon session. This constitution is very important. They need me to be there. You need me to be there. We do, said Annie. Ben hobbled across the library, heading for the door. Goodbye, Ben, Sandy the librarian called. Have a good show. Readers looked up from their books and stared at Ben Franklin as he hurried outside. Jack and Annie caught up with Ben in front of the library. The three of them walked quickly to the sidewalk. My world may seem very rough and simple compared with yours, Ben said breathlessly, but tis filled with the discovery of new things and new ideas. Why, I can't even help create a constitution that will change the history of the world. You can, said Annie. Of course, there are parts that I absolutely do not agree with, said Ben, but additions, as you said, and changes, amendments, will be made later. First, we must come together to create one country. We may never get another chance. That's true, said Jack. This way, said Annie. She and Jack led Ben into the woods. In spite of the heat, Ben moved quickly between the trees. Here we are, Jack said, when they reached the oak tree. Jack and Annie held the ladder steady. Ben tucked his walking stick under his arm and climbed up slowly. Once Ben was inside the treehouse, Jack grabbed the ladder to follow him, but then he heard Ben say, Hello, my good lady. The sound of a woman's voice came from the treehouse. Jack froze at the bottom of the ladder. Jack, it's her, said Annie. I know, Jack said. They looked up. Morgan, cried Annie. Morgan Le Fay and Ben Franklin stood at the treehouse window together. Hello, Jack. Hello, Annie, Morgan called. Congratulations, you successfully carried out my wishes on your last four adventures. You learned a great lesson from Jackie Robinson. 
You worked with Mother Mary Joseph in Texas. You spent time with Emperor Marcus Aurelius of Rome. And you've just given me one of the most remarkable adventures of my life, said Ben. You have showed me the wonders of your world. All people here, men, women, black, white, young, old, are to be treated equally. This country is full of different communities and different people, and yet it is one country. Yes, said Jack. Please, Jack and Annie said. Please, Jack and Annie, never take all the wondrous things of your world for granted, said Ben. Promise me you will always be filled with curiosity and wonder. We promise, said Jack and Annie. Thank you again for everything, said Ben. Farewell, called Morgan. A mighty swirl of wind, a flash of lightning, a crack of thunder, and the magic treehouse, Morgan Le Fay and Benjamin Franklin were gone. Jack and Annie stared up at the top of the oak for a long moment. Then they both sighed and started walking through the woods. Remember in Morgan's rhyme, Morgan says, Every day wonders will show Ben the way, said Annie. At first I thought she meant one modern inventions. Me too, said Jack, but those things just seem to scare Ben. Right, said Annie. So then I thought, what if we show him the public library? He wouldn't be afraid of that. Yeah, especially since he started the first one, said Jack. And he'd get to see how everyone's allowed to go there and borrow books and use computers. And get tons of information, said Annie. Like how cars work. And planes, said Jack. And electricity. Annie stopped walking. So let's go back, she said. Where? There. Now? Now. Why not? Without another word, Jack and Annie started running through the summer heat, heading back to the Frog Creek Library. The end.